We've got another great interview for you guys today. Of course, we don't do any weak sauce interviews here on the Young Turks. Today we're going to have with us Professor Jody David Armour. Wait till you hear some of his theories. I love them. We have to get this conversation more sophisticated than it's been. When Jesse Jackson says, nothing more bothers me at this point in my life than walk down the streets, hear footsteps, start thinking robbery, turn around, see someone white and feel relieved. When Reverend Jesse Jackson says that to an all black congregation in Chicago, we know that racial profiling is not statistically irrational. It's not just crazy people who consider race when they're assessing someone's dangerousness. So we have to get at why it is that blacks disproportionately involve themselves in crime rather than denying those statistics and saying, let's just ignore race. Look, you take a group of people, you disproportionately concentrate them in desperate circumstances, don't be surprised that they disproportionately turn to desperate undertakings like crime. If you have a difference in the crime rate from these poor oppressed people, slavery, this Jim Crow, now mass incarceration, and you're surprised? Is, is drugs the heart of the problem? Like the fact that they're illegal? The, the poverty that makes, them, that makes so many youth turn to drugs and the lack of other opportunities is what the real problem is. And yes, if, I, if I'm a young black male who doesn't have a, 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 a high school diploma that's worth much more than toilet tissue because the school's lost accreditation, like Crenshaw High we just talked about in 2006, and I move into a minimum wage job that I can't even afford anything other than a bus pass and rent on, and I try to walk to a woman who I, who I find attractive and I say, can you meet me with this bus pass maybe downtown for some coffee and she keeps walking away from me and I don't get personal respect because I don't have money and because I'm broke, don't be surprised that somebody's not going to post up in a hallway with crack in their hand for, the, for respect, for self-respect and respect of others and, and trying to keep that dream alive. That's a homo economicus kind of move. That's not somebody who's wicked and irrational. That's somebody who's just kind of doing what an order, like my dean, former dean said, I am a homo, I am a rational utility utility maximizer, that's what I do. And the president himself, whenever he talks to Morehouse or anybody else, even today, he wags his finger self-righteously at a lot of lower class blacks and says, fathers need to be in the home. Well, he didn't have a father in the home and it didn't hurt him. He's the president of the United States. What has to be in the home is some economic support like he was getting from his grandparents, going to the best school in Honolulu, and then to Columbia, and then to Harvard. Then you don't have to necessarily have a father in the home, you just have to have the support. And so he go, he but he makes the noises that the far right wants to hear. You, I used to think he was just throwing a sop to the Fox crew, but I think he actually believes it. I think he's one of those good Negroes versus the bad Negroes. You know, black people, I love black people, but I hate niggas. And, you know, he sees himself as one of the good black people and is falling into that mentality. When you say he's wagging his finger and says, okay, you know, you guys, you're doing it wrong, your dad, you know, you need the dads in the homes, et cetera. Now, on the other hand, of course, the message of personal responsibility is rational, and, and we all agree with it. So how do you deliver that message without wagging the finger, without seeming judgmental? Well, you don't, what you focus on when you have your opportunity as the president is you don't sound like Bill O'Reilly. That's Bill O'Reilly's platform. You see him up there. That's the, personal responsibility is the shibboleth of the right. You know, it is their main cudgel that they look to bludgeon people with, all right? You don't go down that road. You recognize that social factors, you're proof, Mr. President. You impeach the logic of, of the father needing to be in the home because you're the president of the United States without a father in the home. What you had was material support. You had people who cared about you with resources, who could help you along, and you took advantage. So recognize those external factors, those macro level factors as where the real issue is, not these internal deficiency factors.